Texas, and you are listening to the NFHA's NFHS Network's uh, coverage of the UIL 6A Division Championships uh, playoff route out in uh, out in Missouri City, Texas. Tonight's game is between uh, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes against the Houston Heights Bulldogs. Michael Lewis along with Grady Sweeney and also Angelica Collins uh, producing with us as well. Grady, here's, here's two teams that, you know, Hightower, you know, they are, uh, they were 7-1 in the district in 26A and coming off a win last week. Uh, they're more run a run oriented, but defensive oriented team with a couple guys going to the next level, a couple seniors that are keys on their team. But they're playing a Houston Heights ball club that really is not a, not really a slouch ball club. Uh, you know, eight and three on the season, five and one in district, uh, uh, eighteen six a. But the intangibles tonight: one passes a lot, and one actually runs a lot. And looks like Hightower is the one that's really the one that pounds and runs. And they go behind uh, the uh, the running of Jeremy Ray, the TCU commit, uh, as well. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting game, Michael. I mean, the Hurricanes, they are the, correct me if I'm wrong, they're the undefeated district champions they are right now. They are the undefeated district champions. Gosh, and their they're offense, I mean, they're averaging over 46 points a game. And Jeremy Payne, how about that? Rushing yards over 1,600, 20 touchdowns. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that, you know, and the TCU commit is, is no slouch. I mean, believe me, he will help that ball club day one when he actually commits, hits the field next year. It's going to be a new division for TCU mm-hmm. next year because of the, the changes in the alignment. Yeah. But still, he will actually will make sure that, that that TCU running game, which needs a lot of help, he's going to help them really on day one. Yeah, yeah, he is. And then watch out for those Bulldogs coming off that hard victory last week. Yes. Like, oh, my God. Yes. Buccaneers, yeah. right? That quarterback, Reggie McNeil. Reggie McNeil. And ah. here's, here's what he is. Reggie McNeil, 1624 yards passing, but he's also a threat running the ball as well. Him and also their running back, uh, the running back, the tandem of their, the running of him and running back, uh, their running back, uh, Ezell Williams, who was a, the leader on the team. But the thing is with passing with them is that his two favorite targets are watch for Zalen Cormier, who was a leader, the junior, was a leader with 715 yards. And also, uh, also you would also have Lamont Robbins, the junior, who was second on the team with 517. So you know it's going to be a lot of balls thrown in the air by McNeil tonight. Great uh, – Great to, to have you along here on the NFHS Network. Uh, the Fort Bend Hightower Military Band will get us started with the National Anthem.
one. The high tower, the four bit high tower band, and the four bit high tower ROTC with the colors of the national anthem. It is a great night. Uh, it's a very pleasant evening uh, for football, Grady. Uh, uh, 73 degrees in the metropolitan Houston area today. Uh, great night for football as well. You listen to all the playoff action on the NFS, NFHS network as well. And glad to have you aboard for this one for this uh, UIL 6A playoff uh, playoff championship uh, playoff match uh, between regional playoff match between the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes and the Houston Heights Bulldogs. Uh, it's going to be a coin toss, and uh, and the teams will come up to. Uh, to half to the midfield strife as well. A lot of keys uh, for this game tonight. You know, for, for me, actually, for for me, I, th I think, you know, Grady tonight. I think stopping that stopping that that bulldog mm -hmm. passing offense. I think if you stop McNeil tonight, you're going to have them to run, and they're not really effective when they're actually running the ball. Mm -hmm. And I think. If, if Hightower gets off and they run into more of a zone or zone blitz mm -hmm. that has been working for them all year, mm -hmm. I, I, Heights could be in trouble. Yeah, we'll see what the adjustments look like. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Now, for, for Hightower, it's it's going to be – for Heights to win this ballgame, I think it's going to be really stopping the run and making, mm -hmm. and making Joe Stewart Jr. pass mm -hmm. more. And if he has to pass more than uh, – in Hightower, and, and, and there's a good defense, you know, the Bulldogs put on a good defense, I, I think this this could be a pretty good game tonight. Okay, so Heights has deferred the, the toss, and Fort Bend Hightower, the Hurricanes will to receive, and the Hurricanes will be receiving the ball, and it is going to be kicked off by uh, the Bulldogs. So the Hurricanes will be coming from south to north, and the Bulldogs will be kicking from north to south. Very light wind tonight, and very light to no wind tonight. Uh, glad again, glad to have you aboard on the NFHS network as well. Uh, and see who the actual, as Heights kicks off, So receiving the kick will be Jeremy Payne, uh, the the star running back, will be in a will be a, okay. So back for be it looks like is Jaquel Morris, the senior will be back also, uh, and also back uh, for High Towers Kumel Henry, and the kickoff uh, for the Heights they'll receive uh, the kick. From Sean Hardwick Prevost. As we get ready to kick off, we welcome you to the NFHS Network's UIL coverage of the UIL playoffs. And Mac Morris takes it at the at the twenty. At now he's done Morris down. Good good gain. Out to about the 39-yard line. Uh, good run back by Kamal Henry. Um, I'd say about a good 25-yard gain by Henry as well. As you know, the Joseph Stewart is the actual quarterback for uh, for the Hurricanes. And now, as you probably know, they're going to probably feast more on Jeremy Payne tonight. And and we'll see how this works out if they if if the Bulldog defense can actually get uh, Stewart to pass the ball more, and it looks like they're going to start off in a massive uh, set. Now they have trips to the right to left. Stewart give Payne up the middle. Good yard. It's still on oh. the Down to around a little bit over past midfield, close to the Bulldog 49. How about that juke spin move for the extra four yards? You kidding he, me? You, that, is, that was a strong run, but this is the TCU commit. This is what he does very well. The 
It's going to be second down and one. Hand off again. Oh, great tackle. Great tackle. Looks like 34. So it looks like on the tackle was Joseph Chavez, a sophomore, with the tackle for the Bulldogs. It's going to be third and one. There was no gain on the play. And it looks like it was a wildcat. And looks like the Hurricanes may have gotten the first down. So Joseph Stewart Jr. Uh, snuck a uh, quarterback sneak up the middle for Hightower first down, first and ten on the on the Bulldog forty nine, uh, Houston Heights forty nine. Again, you know, like I said, Grady. Again, here is what they do very well, and this is Hightower football. Double trip trips to the right for Stewart. Hand and off. Payne, he's stopped by a, a lot of a lot of uh, bulldog bulldog players. And first on the on the stop was Dylan Ray, the linebacker, the junior linebacker, Dylan Ray with the stop. The biggest thing I think with this this offense is you know it's second and ten. You will see some gadget, some gadget plays as far as passing mm. was concerned from back to back. And here we go. And out across the middle, does not have anyone. Great pressure uh, by the Bulldogs by Elson Crawford, the senior uh, outside linebacker. Great pressure. And here's the thing with here's the thing with with Heights. This year they they were in the region. This region, they led the region in sacks with uh, with 43. Wow. So they are blitzing defense, and they're very, very much Baltimore Ravens-like. <laughs> you know, they're very strong on the on the edges. Oh, oh we got to jump. We're going to have an encroachment. That could give some life to this drive for Hightower. Or it could be actual movement against Hightower. And it looks like it is. Let's see what the call is. There may be movement by Hightower. Let's see what the call is going to be. Okay. Uh, so a delay of game. So it's going to be a delay of game against uh, the Hurricanes. So it's going to be fourth and fifteen from the forty-nine. Oh, it looks like. Oh, it's going to be against Heights. Looks like Heights is so it's, it's going to be fourth and five instead of it being fourth and ten. So fourth and five, and right. the Hurricanes are going to go. I think it looks got... like it looks like it was an offside against the uh, the edge. Yeah. Delay was declined. Looks like it's a third. Fourth and five. Back to pass. It looks like there's a stop and play. Flags are down. And it looks like it may be against Hightower. We're going to clean this up here. The officials are going to clean it up and take a look. Okay. So it's third down. So it's third and ten. So it's going to be a trips. It's going to be double slot to the to the left for for Stewart. Back to pass. Stewart has a man on the outside at the fifty. At the 40. it's going to be close. Ooh, oh, it's going to be close. and we got a flag. You got a flag. The the pass is complete to Michael Reddick, the senior. And it looks like it's going to be against Hightower. Oh. Oh. That will kill Hightower's drive. It, it kills it. Just, oh. So it takes it back to around the, to the Hightower 40, I'd say the 47 of Hightower. Now they're going to go with, um, 
third and 13. Trips to the right for Joe Stewart Jr. Back to pass to Stewart. Looking, looking, has a Got man. a man deep. He's he got it. Him. He has him down to the 20 to the 10 yard line. The pass is completed. Mikel, Mikel Reddick. Reddick. Wow. Great pass by Joe Stewart. Here's what I was telling you about Grady that the gadget plays, even though they run, the high tower offense runs a lot. It's known for its running. Here's where we can see a gadget player too, and it opens up. Stewart back to pass. Almost to, picked. Almost oh, picked. by Broderick Brown. Broderick he Brown read that almost, play. He read yeah. that really well. He was looking for us, for Reddick again, but for some reason, Broderick Brown smelled that one. And he's like, Had not he again. he picked that one off, that would have been a house call. A house call. House call. It, another uh, great thing about the, the Bulldogs defense, also, they led their district in, in interceptions as well. Only just to be behind Lamar, uh, huh. Houston Lamar, in, in that in their district as well. It's going to be second and ten. That's going to be right around the thirteen of the Bulldogs. Going to be double slot to the right, back to pass to Stewart. He's going to run it. He's going to run out, but he's 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 brought down there, and it's Jordan Clavel with the tackle, the junior. That was a great play made by Clavel, and he covers a lot of ground. I mean, the second covers, tallest guy on the team. The I mean, second tight. <laughs> you know, and a lot of people are looking at Jordan Clavel. Is they are looking at him good size, good quickness, and he's got a lot of offer letters, uh, you know, as well. But everybody's really thinking he's a, he'll probably be a JJ Watt when he gets to be a pro. I love that. Back to pass is Stewart. Has a man, but he falls down at about the 15-yard line. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be just Austin Bowen. Let's see what they do here. We've got fourth and 15. This from the 19-yard line. 750, a little bit at seven. I had a little bit under uh, seven minutes, coming up on seven minutes in the first quarter. Thank you for joining us on the NFHS Network. Oh, I like this. Fourth and 12. Do you think they go for it or try to get a man to jump? They are going to go for it. Double slot to the right for Joe Stewart Jr. Has a man in motion. Back to pass is Stewart. And he has a man right there. Touchdown. He's in. Wow. Jeremy Payne. Jeremy Payne to TCU commit with a touchdown. And then another gadget play. Again, a mix of run and pass, and this is what's what will throw a heights heights zone scheme off. On a fourth and twelve, no less. Oh, How oh. about that? And it, it, it was it that they caught the gap and they caught the lack of rotation by the, the secondary by the Bulldogs, and this is what happens. And the kick. There's a flag on the play. Jonathan Vargas uh, looks like they're going to go. Vargas was going to kick. Okay, so that is an offsides on Bryce on Bryce Yavalier for for Heights. So they're in a formation. It makes me think that they're going to go for two, but it may not be the case. Oh, they are. They are going for two. And great tackle. tackle. Right there, great tackle. And to back up, Cameron Reddick was trying to. He's one of the the Wildcat, uh, Wildcat uh, quarterbacks that the Hurricanes use. Uh, he was stopped. Great stop, and it, it it tells you right there that this 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 game may be a little bit more tight than what we expected. This Houston Heights defense, even though they gave this six pointer, they bend and no break, and that interior line is just great. 
And uh, that tackle, that tackle was made by Jason by Jalen Pims, who led that charge into stopping a two pointer. Seven eighteen left in the first quarter. The score: the Fort Bend High Tower Hurricanes six and the Houston Heights Bulldogs nothing. You're listening and watching UIL six A Division Championship action on the NFHS Network. Back here at Hall Stadium in uh, Missouri City, Texas, outside of Houston, and the Hightower, Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes are leading the Houston Heights High School Bulldogs, and... It's taken by Lamont Robbins. Robbins with the return out to around the 40-yard line. Robbins, one of those <laughs> leading receivers for uh, for uh, for the Bulldogs as well for Reggie McNeil. And Reggie McNeil is going to bring his team out. McNeil, the, six, the 5'11 quarterback, 1624 yards passing and 417 yards on the ground. Fort Bend Hightower leading this one by a score of seven of six to nothing. Over Houston Heights High School, Michael Lewis along with Gray Sweeney and also um, also Angelica Collins uh, with us as well on the production side of it. Be first and ten from the forty-one. Trips to the right. There's flags on the play. Looks like it may not be McNeil quarterbacking. Double check that. Hmm. It looks like he yeah, changed his number. Is, unless he changed his number. It has it listed as Dylan Ray quarterbacking, but we'll just double check that. Get it oh, down he's got 50, room. Down to 40, down to the 30, down to about the 29 yard line. Dylan Ray is actually the quarterback for uh, for the Bulldogs. A nice run. And you would think for some reason or another that they would go start passing. But it seems like Dylan Ray actually he's one of the one of those wildcat quarterbacks that can actually propel this this Bulldog offense. Great. So a little Taysom Hill in there is my first thought. Back to pass, and Ray runs it up the middle. And watching this team myself, and, and I tell you what, Dylan Ray reminds me so much of Taysom Hill when he's running, you know, from the Saints. He is just straight up, a straight up runner. He's so strong. And I tell you what, this is a great backup for Reggie McNeil. It looks like staying out there. 609 left in the first quarter of this one. Got a second and seven. Second and seven. Double slide for Ray to the trips to the right for Ray. Ray back give. Uh, it's going to be a flag on a play. And the give was to no yards to Zell Williams, the leading rusher on the team. And it looks like it's going to go against Heights. That is a drive killer, uh, chopping block penalty on the Bulldogs. That will take them back, and it takes them back to around the uh, close to the their, to the Hurricanes 41 yard line. It'll be second and 22. What do you think the logic's here for putting a? Uh Dylan Ray in over Reginald McNeil. I tell you what, this is a, this is a good mix for Coach for Coach Dixon. McNeil back to pass as a man. Oh, just outside of the reach of the hands of Lamont Robbins, one of the receivers, one of the key receivers on this ball club. 
And great, great uh, defense on the play as well. Uh, defending on the play. Was Keelan Fountain. Third and 22. Trips to the right for Dylan Ray. In motion is Robbins. He motions out. Ray gives it out. Robbins at the 40. At the 30. Down to a uh, near side to 31. Gets some of the yardage back. But it looks like, looks like the Bulldogs most likely will... See if they're going to try a field goal. They're going to try to punt it from this end. Looks like they're going to go and go ahead and punt it. And Sean Hardwick, Prevost, is going to is going to is going to punt it. Hightower doesn't have a a man deep. Nice punt. Punt and it. About Goes the two or three, at huh? The two or yeah. three yard line. Good punt by Sean Hardwick. Prevost. Six to nothing. The Fort Bend Hightower, Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes lead the Houston Heights. Bulldogs. Four forty six of this one, the first quarter. Michael Lewis along with Gray Sweeney and Angelica Collins on our producer tonight. Oh give back and it's a is it is it a safety? I think he made it. I think uh, Jeremy possession. Payne made it out, but there were a there were a lot of bulldogs there to meet him, and it's at the one yard line. Genevian Anthony, Jalen Bims were both there, leading the charge. Second and 12 from the Hurricanes, too. Stewart back to pass, looking long. Man fell down. No interception. Great, uh, great uh, defense there by Noah Soul. And the pass was actually intended. It looks like it was for Zion Kearney. It's going to be third and 12 from the two-yard line. Back to pass is Stewart. Going deep. Going deep again as a man. Overshot, overshot just a him. bit. He, again, another great defensive pan, uh, play by Noah Soul. He was trying to reach... Uh, Looks like he was trying to reach one of the receivers. I think that was Jeremy Payne who went out there, if I'm not it mistaken. Looks like it may have been, I'm going to double check who that uh, number two is. It's going to be a punt now. Coming down, call for a fair catch at the uh, great field position for the for the by Broderick Brown calling that uh, fair catch and the punt was a 25 yard punt Heist is in great field position 343 in the first quarter first and 10 for the Heights Heights Bulldogs, they are at the, looks like they're at the, the, the uh, Hurricanes 30, this is 33 yard line. 
Ray has trips right. Ray gets I snap. Fumble. It's a fumble. It's oh. A fumble. oh. D uh, falling back on it is Ezell Williams. Ooh. That would have been a disaster, Grady. If that had that, you know, I mean, my goodness, had that been a fumble and they were recovered, here we go. Our reservations for six would have happened. <sighs> just dodged the bullet. Slightly high snap, but he grabbed hold of it, but that handoff it was just a little behind. Yes. Could be double slots on both sides for. For Coach, for Coach uh, Stephen Dixon. Back to pass, Ray. Ooh. Oh, almost intercepted. Keelan Fountain looked like he had reservations for six on that one. And it looks like he was trying to trying to reach a... Ray was trying to reach a Lamont, Lamont Robbins... It's going to be second and 1,539. Looks like Ray's getting a signal from the sideline. Ray gives it out Ooh. to Robbins. He drops it. Lamont Robbins drops it. Uh, again, great defensive, great defensive stop by the Hurricanes. Luke Davis was the actual person on the on the edge to to make the stop. Two fifty five in the first quarter. This one, Grady. So far, it's been like a nip and tuck, but you know, High Tower showing the defense that they 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 have it and. And here we go. Punt. Great punt. Great bounce again. Gets it around to round to three. Great kick again by Sean Hardenick Prevost. Another one at the corner. Great punting that he's doing. Uh, looks like there may have been a flag on the play. Let me see what the call is. And the Hurricanes will have it at their own three. We're going to see where the actual... The actual... Penalty, if there was a penalty... It looks like... It's like the way uh, the way he, the head coach Cornelius Anthony was res responding. It may have been against Hightower. And it, it, if it was a penalty against Hightower, you know, Grady, it, that that may show some, you know, some that this could be where if Heights could get a stop, some more good field position, they could bring some momentum back to them. We get in this first quarter almost tied. Okay. Okay, so it's actually actually offsides on the kicking team. So it was the high tower it was high tower will get the ball at the it's like it's actually gonna come out. So if it's if it's high, if it's high if it's against Heights, I know they have it at the two, their own the High Tower's own two. Now the officials are going to look and see how, what they have. Okay, so High Tower's actually going to be at their own two yard line. Hmm. Interesting call. Hmm. You would think if, if it was against the Bulldogs, it would come out at least a Unless seven. they took it back. Because there's a lot of conversation he was having with the head coach. Mm. Okay, it is going to be Ooh. Joe Stewart Jr. has his group now. Offense at the two-yard line. Back to pass Stewart. Shovel gets it pass. Out to pain. He gets it out to maybe, oh, oh. stopped at the one-yard line. 
Good awareness, too. He was almost sacked on that play. So good shovel pass. But good man. shovel pass. Great, great, great defensive play. Joseph Chavez and Justin Middleton with the actual tackle. This has been quite a game so far, Michael. Defense I, is really I mean, showing defense, up. This is. These teams have been really good. And I tell you, you know, the Heights Bulldogs, they are known for their defense. Their edges are just so, so precise. And they, they, they stop the run very well. And it stopped. Uh, it stopped the stopping play. Got a delayed play of game. game on the offense, and Coach Cornelius Anthony is going out to to call the timeout. We'll take the timeout with him with 148 left in the first quarter. The score: the Fort Bend High Tower Hurricanes six, and the Houston Heights Bulldogs nothing. You're watching and listening to. UIL 6A Divisional Championships on the NFHS Network. We'll be back. Welcome back to Hall Stadium and uh, Missouri City, Texas, just outside of Houston. Michael Lewis, along with Grady Sweeney, and also Jellica Collins, uh, our producer tonight. Six and nothing. The Fort Bend High Tower Hurricanes lead the uh, lead the Houston Heights Bulldogs. Six and nothing. Back to pass is Stewart. Still a little bit of breathing room. Gets to the pass out. Looks like he he has a man. As man looks like it is, is Michael Reddick, but it, it just wasn't, you know, it was just enough to get them out of the, at least the danger zone. But a lot of penalties, if, if, even though they have the 6 nothing lead, mm -hmm. Grady, but I tell you what, a lot of penalties have really uh, gone up and have hurt some drives for Hightower. Yeah, a lot of laundry on the field. Almost every other play at this point since their second drive. Double slot to the left. Now comes over trips to right in motion. Back to pass to Stewart. Scrambles. Avoiding a rush. Getting out of the. Getting out Great. of the. Gets out to about Couple the. spin moves. There's spin laundry move on the field, though, Michael. There is base, oh, but there is. There the, might be a hold. Penalties. It could be a holding, and it is on, yeah. the, on the hurricane. Oh, it's too Again, bad. It was another drive. Another drive. They're proceeding with, the, with a great play, yeah. and another drive is killed. Looks like a holding penalty against the against the Hurricanes. So that's going to put it right about the four yard line. It's going to be second. Uh, I'd say about second. It, it's ball's going to be at the three yard line. As we, it's third and nine. Ooh. At the three yard line, this is going to be the last play of the first quarter. Looks like. So it has trips trips left. Back to pass to Stewart. Get he out gets of it. out he gets of the out scramble. Of it. Stewart at the 15. At 20. Down to the 30. Oh, Joe Stewart he's got go. room. He's got room. He's down to the 40. Watch down out, Michael. I think we had a hold. 41. I think we and got a hold on the offense and then that run. Right at the 25. What a great run, too. Let's see what this flag is. <laughs> Great run. God, a great awareness. Almost sacked. Found his hole. 65-yard run. <clears throat> Maybe. <clears throat> yep. There was a oh, hold. When he was running on, past him on, on the 25, Payne. there was a hold. Oh, Jeremy Payne. Yeah. Hold. <clears throat> That's erased, too bad. He erased a 65-yard oh. run by Joe Stewart Jr. Unbelievable. 
it's like an amazing run too. It's an amazing run. It it it, it looked like he was going to get sacked, and he came right through the a great great opening there, and it just yeah another big play and another and, and penalties that are killing this hurt this hurricane team. I think All great plays that they're making, and now we are. That was the last play of the first quarter. So now we're headed to the second quarter with the score. The Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes, six. And the Houston Heights Bulldogs, nothing. You're watching and listening to the UIL 6A State Playoff Divisional Championships on the NFHS Network. We'll be back. One. Welcome back to Hall Stadium in Missouri City, Texas, just outside of Houston. Michael Lewis, along with Grady Sweeney, and also Angelica Collins on the uh, our producer tonight as well. It is the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes six and the Houston Heights Bulldogs nothing. But Grady, I'm gonna tell you right now, this has become this could be more of a higher score game than ever. And Hightower now seeing what. They could have had great pass, pass passed by. He's got more his room. feet uh, up to around a 22-yard line. You know who that great, is great pass from Joseph Stewart Jr. to Jeremy, Jeremy Payne. Payne, and it's going to be a first down by for the uh, for the Hurricanes. But I tell you what, before that play, a 65-yard just to think had the the Stewart run stayed. Mm. You're talking about almost. The drive yeah. being in the red zone. Well, and you know what? There he is. Stewart great gets stop. Oh, my god. Great gosh. stop. That's Jordan. Jordan Claville. Again. Uh, again. Watch out. Jordan Claville, the junior. You know. And all that hold was on pain last time he made up for it that first. He, he did. <laughs> He's like, I, I'll I take care of it. Right. I know it's, it doesn't I, make I up for the 65-yard field goal. 65-yard run. And that would have actually had that hold not been there. You're talking about... This team most likely would be in the red zone. Yeah. Stewart's going to have double slot to the right. And now he has a pain in motion. It's going to pain. Going to yep. pain out to the 20. Pain to the 25. Near the 30. And he stopped right there. Good tackle on the play by Gels Lewis. And talk about an actual double, uh, one of the double, double position, double sport players, Kellen Lewis, a star baseball team on the Heights, on the Heights uh, Bulldogs uh, baseball team. It's going to be third and three. Back to pass Jack uh, Stewart and gives it out to Payne, but there are flags on the field. It may look like from the coach's reaction it could be against the Hurricanes. Again, the Hurricanes are moving, but then it's almost like a one step forward, two steps back on these drives that are big play drives, and they're killing them with penalties. A legal motion in the uh. offense for the Hurricanes. Now it brings it back. It, instead of it now being maybe a possible third and three, maybe possibly a third, third and eight. Third and eight, yeah. Tough drive for sure. And Again, this is a what you don't want to do in playoff football. Third and nine, it's from their own from their own 25-yard line to be the Hurricanes. And timeout. And timeout uh, by the Hurricanes. 10-07 uh, left in the second quarter. The score, the
The Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 6 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs nothing. You're watching 6A, UIL 6A Divisional Championship Playoffs right here on the NFHS Network. We'll be back. And what? Thank you for joining us uh, here on the NFHS Network from Hall Stadium outside of uh, Houston, Texas, uh, in Missouri City, Texas. Uh, Michael Lewis along with Grady Sweeney and Angelica Collins on the production crew tonight. It's uh, third and nine, and the game Hand is to Payne. Payne, and he is stopped. Great Whoa. stop there uh, by Nick Brown, the outside uh yeah, the outside receiver. He does a receiver and also, uh, also is the uh, defensive back as well. It's going to be a punting situation. Going back to receive is Roderick Brown. Roderick Brown for Heights, and the punt is going to. Punt's coming down. The kick is coming down, but waved by Broderick Brown. And that will put the Bulldogs right around the, I'd say about the 39-yard 30, line, their own 39. Uh, good kick. Uh, good kick by Ashford Lenhart. This is a game so far has been, you know, great. He's been full of penalties, but more so on the Hightower side than it has been on the Houston Heights side. It has been. They've had so many great plays on offense as well, but just, ah, just those, those, penalties, those penalties, man. Penalties, like yes. It's going to be first and ten with Dylan Ray and the Bulldogs. Ray back to pass, gives it out. Has a man, short yardage play to Lamont Robbins, the senior. Yep, and shut down by Deshaun Mosley. Mo Deshaun Mosley there. Defensive end, senior. Defensive end. Now, Deshaun Mosley, uh, great story. We'll talk about him in a minute. Oh. oh. Back to pass is Ray Free, free play, and it's intercepted, but it's going to be switched over, and mm -hmm. there are some skirmishes on the right side. Yeah. Looks like number 55. Uh, dri driven Ferris. Yeah, he jumped way early. So it's going to be offsides against uh, Hightower. That's going to move the ball up to around the midfield strife. Dylan Ray is going to have double slots to the left side. Give. Oh, now, great tackle. The give Who's was that? to that? Izell Williams. Is that Braylon? Braylon Kizzy? Braylon Kizzy with, with the actual Woo! tackle. It's gonna be. It's gonna be first. It was a nice play. It's gonna be. Uh, That's a third, third and down. seven. Third and yeah. seven from the forty-eight for the Bulldogs. Dylan Ray has got, has got a man in motion. He's got running out of time. He's got about five seconds to make something happen. Huh. Talking to and the ref, and that's, that's gonna be, either a timeout or delay a game. That's a timeout. Okay. That's going to be a timeout. The Houston, 
Houston Heights is going to call a timeout. 7.52 left in the second quarter. The score, Houston, Houston the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 6 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs nothing. You're watching and listening to in to UIL 6A Divisional Championships on the NFHS Network. We'll be back. And one. Welcome back to Hall Stadium in Missouri City, Texas. Just south of Houston. Michael Lewis along with Grady Sweeney and uh, our producer Angelica Collins. And the Houston Heights uh, Bulldogs on the move. Dylan Ray has double slots on both sides. Ray back to pass. Look across the middle. It was overshot. He was trying to uh, trying to get it to Lamont Robbins. And uh, looks like he just the touch was just a little bit over. And coming back out to punt for uh, for the Bulldogs will be Sean Hardnick uh, Prevost, who's had some, who's had a great punting night as well. One of the top punters in the district as well. And looks like back to receive. Which we'll actor to see who's, who's back to receive? It looks like it's Kelvin Keelon Fountain. We'll double check that as well for uh, for the Hurricanes. Defensive battle so far here, six to nothing. Uh, the the Hurricanes of Fort Bend Hightower lead this one, and up and it is it's called a fair catch, but it looks like it's coming back. Thought that was Jeremy Payne that was on the end. It looks like it's going to be uh, a penalty against the Bulldogs of Houston Heights. And it looks like it's actually going to be a re-kick by, by Hardnick Prevost. The kick. Great Prevost punt. brings it down. Jeremy Payne goes back, and he fair catches it at the 20-yard line. You know, for a team that's really scoring a lot of points in, in Hightower, tonight it seems like their offense is really been stifled the running game has been stifled and Joe Stewart Jr. like I said you, you stop the running game you're going to stop you're going to make him start passing he hasn't been really successful yeah it. it's been interesting I do wonder what this game would be like if we had Reginald McNeil and quarterback can tonight so you I'm wondering what? how this I'm would be going I, I, I definitely understand you know I definitely understand what you're saying you know Reggie McNeil very good passer almost like some of the other passes we've seen so far this season. Yeah. Stewart rolling out right side. Has a man. He has him around the 30-yard line. It is yeah. a catch, and that is made by Mikel Reddick. So this could be a yeah, first and 10 for the 31 for the Hurricanes. 7-14 uh, left in the first half of this one. High Fort Bend Hightower leading Houston Heights at uh, six to nothing. He's got it. He's oh. got it. It passes out and again back to Mikel Reddick. Great stop by Caden Cole, the sophomore. Kate Gold, the sophomore, with the stop. As you probably know, the only scoring tonight is a short 15-yard touchdown pass from Stewart to Mikhail Reddick in the first quarter, but the two-yard, the two-point conversion was not uh, went off or not. Trips right, Stewart back to pass, eluding the rush. He's going to run going. it. He's going to go to the 40, down close to the first down marker around the 39-yard line. Uh, he was he was pushed. He's, he was drawn out by Ellison Crawford on the pursuit. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Hurricanes of Fort Bend Hightower. 
And you know Jordan Clavell is after him, but oh, the, oh, the wheels on Joseph it, Stewart it just, just ran right out of there. So if, if he's out of the yes. pocket, you can't catch him down. But Jordan Clavell yes. gets you if you hang in there too long. Give. He takes it. He takes it on his own. Stewart uh, up the middle. I think he's met game. right at the line. Met right at the line by Jatavian Anthony with the stop. Also there on the stop as well is who we were talking about, the commit to possible University of Houston, Jalen Bims, also. That front line of, of, the, of, the, of the Bulldogs is just so, so, so talented. Trips to the right for Stewart. Back to pass to Stewart. Looking Going at deep. Him, man. He's, He's open. Ready. He's open. He's open. He's open. Oh, perfect pass. It was a great pass to Mikel Reddick, and <sighs> it had looked reservations for six, and yeah. Reddick could not hold on to it. It, it Mikel Reddick could not hold on to it, and it was... It would have been just a picture-perfect six-pointer. Uh, and the Bulldogs jo dodged a bullet on that one. They did. They did. So be third and ten... For the Hurricanes, uh, it's going to be at their own 42-yard line. They're leading six to nothing over the Houston Heights Bulldogs. Trips to the right for Stewart. Back to pass to Stewart, looking as a man. It off. And he has him right there in the Ooh, midfield. He's going to be a couple yards short. He may be a couple yards short, a few yards short. Uh, the pass was was complete down oh. to Ashford. Ashford Lindhart. It's going to be fourth down. <coughs> and coming in to punt <coughs> be Kamal Henry. <coughs> Back to Broderick Brown for the Heights. For Heights. I thought he was going to take and it. He's yeah, take he off. does take it. He does take off. And he's down the to the first and he more. Got the first down, a fake punt. A fake punt by Ashford Landhart. And he gets the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes a first down. Scratch that. I think it was Kamal Henry with that. If I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Yeah, it was Kamal Henry. Wow. It was Kamal How Henry. about that? No. And he was going to punt it too, and he saw that open spot, and he's like, no. Nope. <laughs> he just took it. <laughs> Here we go. Jeremy Payne. Jeremy Payne up the middle. Uh, Jeremy Payne up to around the 28-yard line, first and 10. You know, that was a great play. A good – it was a good drive to keep – the keep the drive alive for the hurricanes and, and here you go if that was one you got a fourth and two i'm like god you gotta go for it right yes you got five just under to, five minutes you, left you in the half go for it. and uh and yeah i think he would have punted it if he had pressure but you know you saw that open spot yeah. and he's like it's you know and hand yeah, off the pain again the pain down <laughs> to around the move. 20 uh, a little bit of around the 19 uh, yard line uh, so. Tackle was made there uh, yeah. by Noah Soul. All right. Here's another drive there in the hurry up offense. First and 10, under First, four minutes. Uh, four minutes at the 20. And Give. Payne's Payne. got it. Uh, he stumbles and he gets down to about the. Uh, about, about, probably about the 20. Well, I'd say about the 14, maybe a 12-yard line. I Probably about the 16-yard line. Oh, no, you're right. They got the 12. And the paint Bang, again. Up, paint again. Up the middle. Stop there. About the 4. About the 4-yard yeah. line. And good play by Connor Brown. 3.07 left in this first half. Uh, 
The Hurricane, Hurricanes of Fort Bend Hightower leading this one by a score of six to nothing, but they're driving under a little bit under three minutes left in the first half. Going to be double slot to the right for Joe Stewart Jr. Oh, did we get an early jump? May have got an early jump. Uh, there'll be a decline though, and that's it's, a touchdown. That's a touchdown. And that touchdown is by, you know who, Jeremy Payne, the TCU commit. But let's see what the flags on the play. It's going to be a touchdown. It is against Houston Heights and it is declined by the Hurricanes. And that will make the score 12 to nothing. So what do they do? Make up for the two that they missed last time or do you kick the extra I, point? I, I would just actually just kick the extra point uh, at this point. But you never know. Uh, it, there could be Coach Cornelius Anthony could bring something different. And could go back for the two as well. And they are going for two. Single back. Back to pass is Stewart. Ooh. Looking for a man outside and has no mm. one. And he was trying to get it over to uh, Ashford, Ashford Landhart. With 2.46 left in the first half, the score, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 12 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs nothing. You're watching, you're listening to the UIL 6A Divisional Regional Championships on the NFHS Network. We'll be back. Welcome back to Hall Stadium in Missouri City, Texas, just outside of Houston. It is uh, Michael Lewis along with Grady Sweeney and our producer, Jellinger Collins. You know, Grady, we were talking about uh, as the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes lead this one 12 to nothing after a Jeremy Payne short yardage uh, touchdown run for Hightower. We were talking about uh, Deshaun Mosley and a great story about him. He comes from a pro football family. We'll talk about it after this kick. Kick coming. A little bit squib. Squib kick. Going out and grabbing oh, it. And tough great hit. hit. Connor Brown was hit. Very oh, hard. that was uh, Michael Amy. Michael the, Amy. The junior. Hit. Yeah. Woo. Hit. Great hit. Yeah, Deshaun Mosley, he actually comes from a football playing uh, NFL family. Okay. And, okay. Uh, and and one of his, it, you probably didn't know, he, he played actually with the Texans, one of the linebackers. Uh, last it was Mosley, I believe. He, huh. he, he still lives here and does football camps out here in the Fort Bend County area. How cool is that? Exciting to see where his career goes from here. Ah, he's great, great senior. He, yeah. He'll most likely be looked by a lot of play, by a lot of, and. Looks like there was a Wildcat, a little short yardage run by Lamont Robbins, who's a Wildcat quarterback, on that play. All right, it's going to be some clock management coming into this, Mike. We got under two and a half minutes two in this and half. half. Minutes and, you know, Scoreless Heights, Heights. Heights. Yes, and Heights has to get something. They're at their own 35-yard line, trailing this one 12 to nothing. Double slot. To each side for for Dylan Ray. See, he looks for Lamont Robbins. Looking Back his to way. Mrs. Ray, and he has a man. He holds on to it. It's got Gabriel. Gabriel Mo. But not for much. About a yard, maybe. Very short. Yeah. The junior gets makes the catch, but it gets a short yardage gain on it as well. Third and nine. Third and nine. One thirty-two left in this one. You know, Grady, if if the Bulldogs can actually get on the board before the half, this will give them momentum as they will get the ball in the second half as well. Trips to the right for Ray.
Man, Thank Ray you. up the middle. He he runs it and gets around Ooh. the forty-five yard line. He's gonna get the first down. And going into a hurry up offense. Yeah. Trying to get the, trying to get them some momentum before they get to the first the end of the first half. Trips to the right for Ray. Ray runs it up the middle. Goes out to around the midfield. He still fights for the feet, first. Fights for the first and gets Ooh. around the 36, 37 yard line. I'd say 38 yard line of Fort Ben Hightower. They're still in a hurry up offensive mode. They got that's at the 43 yard line of, of Fort Ben Hightower. Yeah, and I think Trips. they only got one timeout left, Michael, so they're going to have to. And there it is. Yep, and they're going to use that timeout. We'll, we'll keep it right here. 37 seconds left in this first half. Fort Ben Hightower leading this one 12 to nothing. But it seems like, you know, with the second half coming, I'm really feeling great that the Bulldogs of Houston Heights may have some momentum going into the second half. I think so as well. Anyone's ball game still, Michael. Anybody's 12 ball nothing. game. 12-0. And, and uh, I wonder if those two missed ex do two missed extra points by Hightower will actually come back to hunt them in the second half. Yeah, we'll we can see. only see. I tell you what, if you're just now joining us here on the NFHS Network for this game between Fort Ben Hightower, the Hurricanes, and Houston Heights uh, Bulldogs, uh, the Hurricanes uh, started early in the first great drive in the first half, a touchdown pass from Joe Stewart Jr. to Michael Reddick. 15 yards for a touchdown, but the two-point conversion was was missed. Then, uh, just in the second quarter, uh, George, Jeremy Payne with a short five-yard run, uh, six-yard run, but then that extra point was missed as well. So now it is uh, 12 to nothing. Uh, Hightower leading Houston Heights. It's going to be first and 10 on the 43 of Hightower. It'll be double slots to the right for Jordan Ray. It's going to come to halftime. We have a actual score from one of the games uh, out in... Um, is A&M Consolidated and Fullshire, and uh, that one is a 5A match. And A&M Consolidated leading highly ranked Fullshire by a score of 24 to 7 at halftime. We'll keep you up with that game as well in the NFHS Network. Back to pass is Ray looking across the middle, oh. looking outside. He had a man. He was trying to get it to Caden Cole, the sophomore, and. Defensively on the play was Ephraim Dotson on that play as well for Hightower. 30 seconds left in the first half of this one. It's going to be double slots on both sides for Dylan Ray. Back to pass is Ray. He's looking, he's going to run, Ooh. but gets around a 39, but still he has know. to get up. He has to get up and actually, I, you know, he has to, he has to, there's still some time running. The time is running, but now it's stopped. Huh. I think the officials that may have stopped it for, not for sure if there was a timeout by Hattower or if they actually stopped the play. Okay, there's going to be a timeout by Hightower. We're going to keep it right here. Uh, 12 to nothing. Fort Ben Hightower leading the Houston Heights uh, Bulldogs. Grady, the winner of this ball game is in the bracket, is in the bracket of Galena Park North Shore. As you probably know, a power in the area. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like even if one of these teams wins, who would actually would actually would would, would match up against a great Galena Park a North Shore team? That's a tough question, Michael. 
both solid teams. <sighs> you know, I, you know, and and Galena, Galena Park, or even Galena Park North Shore, or even the six A, even you're talking, uh, Katie. You know, the powerhouse Katie. I mean, one of those two. I mean, uh, it, it it really looks like it's going to be. There's a balance that's coming out of the six A six A division this year, go, headed up to. Uh, they call the Jerry World up in Arlington for mm. the UIL finals. Twenty to eight, uh, twenty seconds, uh, twenty point eight seconds left. Excuse me on that one. Uh, Fort Bend High Tower leading Heights by a score of twelve to nothing. Ray back to pass has a man outside. Gonna, can he get out? Can he get out? Nick Brown no. still can't get out. Time is running, running. The, the efficiency of this this clock management is not favoring heights for some reason. I need to spike in two, the, one. There we go. He got it. Got the spike. With a flag on the field. And there may have been a flag on the play. There's some some actual back and forth. Let's see what the actual, if there's an actual penalty on the play, there is a stop in play as well. Yeah, they spiked it right at the two second mark. It'll be a fourth and short. It'll be a fourth, and it looks like it's going to be a timeout. Okay. Let's talk about the actual, the actual, you know, if you look at the actual playoffs right now, there's a balance as we get into, you know, it's 792 teams actually in the state of Texas started this last week. Now we're down to at least 300 of them to them and it's still going to march down as we get close to Arlington. I'm being really upfront and honest with you. I really feel confident about a Duncanville Galena Park North Shore 6A match up in Arlington, but I don't know. You know, Duncanville did win their game, but Looks like we're actually going to go to the end of the first half. Looks like the officials have closed it. So we're at the end of the first half. We go to halftime here at Hall State. The score, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 12 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs nothing. You are listening watching to UIL 6A Divisional Championship, Championship Playoff Action on the NFHS Network. We'll be back.
Welcome back to Hall Stadium in uh, Missouri City, Texas, just south of Houston. Uh, it is the UIL 6A uh, Divisional Playoff Championships uh, match between the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes and the Houston Heights Bulldogs. Grady Sweeney along with uh, Michael Lewis along with Grady Sweeney and Angelica Collins uh, as well in the produ production part of it. Um, Grady, you know, even though Hightower is leading this ball game by a score of 12 to nothing over Houston Heights, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Two, two extra points eventually may actually be the, the calling card for Hightower if they lose this game tonight. Uh, Houston Heights gets the ball. The Bulldogs get the ball in the, the start of the second half as Hightower and both teams are coming out on the field. What impressed you about the the – the Bulldogs. Well, let me tell you, Michael. So there have been some unbelievable scrambles, but I want to talk about the Hurricanes for a minute, okay? So here we've got Joseph Stewart, who a 65 rush that was called back due to a hold, a 10-yard rush with multiple spin moves on their own two, which was called back, and yet he's still able to execute. What's more impressive is outmaneuvering the 6'4 defensive end, Jordan Clavel. Yes. Okay? Yes. If you're in the pocket, he's coming for you. If you can get out of there... Which he stewards doing, you can make it happen. Now we've had some great rushes from Jeremy Payne, a great game-changing fake punt by Kamal Henry, rushed for 20 yards. Mm -hmm. And despite all those flags and hangups, the high Hightower Hurricanes are making it happen, Michael. Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, I'm just kind of my concern is is that the two pointers that they missed, and you, you're talking about a game that's 12 nothing. Heights is not this ball game at all, and if if and if for some reason or other. If you look at Heights and you look at Dylan Ray, Dylan Ray has done very well. You know, he, there have been some 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 game changing plays by the, the drives that they've made, but for whatever reason, you know, they've been stopped by that uh, that defense. Yeah, and you know, Dylan Ray is finding his rhythm. He's had a lot of successful rushes, and they're just going to need a little bit more from the passing game. And I think we've got ourselves a ball game. Yeah, we think if they can get if he can get more of his his. Uh, Receivers involved Jalen Cormier and also uh, Lamont Robbins, and it'll be it. They, they may have a, a shot at getting back into this one. We're getting ready to start the second half of this one. Uh, Houston Heights will take take the ball and will get it. Uh, Ezell Williams is back. Uh, uh, also, along with Broderick Brown and. You know, Alvarez to kick and comes down. That's Nick Brown taking Nick it Brown back. Taking it back. Brown takes it down to the 20, out down to around the 30. 35, I 35, think, Michael. Yeah. I'd say about 35 yard line. See, first and 10 for Dylan Ray and the Houston Heights Bulldogs. Now, what is so surprising about tonight is the fact is, you know, we were expecting. Uh, we were expecting uh, Reggie McNeil. We wonder if there was an injury from last week's playoff win that they had last week that may have brought Dylan Ray in uh, to to fill in for him. Yeah, it makes you wonder. It'd just be a very different ball game, Michael. But you know what? I think Dylan Ray's about to make something happen. He, we'll see here. We'll see here. He Starting off strong. No one in the backfield. No one in the backfield. He has uh, trips uh, to the to the right. Man and in motion. motion be, uh, That's Robbins. Robbins. Back to pass. He gets it out to Robbins at the 40, <coughs> near the 40-yard line, but back to the line of scrimmage. <coughs> it's going to be second down yep. uh, for the Bulldogs. Yep. Great stop by Keelan Fountain on that one. Keelan Fountain with the tackle. And here's the thing. I think <coughs> I think Dylan Ray, if he, op if he opens up that, that middle with a lot of the running or either him or get – He's L. Williams involved in the, in the running as Yeah, well. he's had somewhat of a quiet night tonight. He's had yes. some big plays, but I think they need to utilize him a little bit more to get this going. Yes. And let's see what they got here. You got a second and 11. Okay. He's going to take Ray, it. He's going to go up the middle and gets a few of those yards back. It's going to be close to the 40-yard line. Yeah. And that's going to be third and about six. And with the tackle, we were talking about Deshaun Mosley. Yes, 
Yes, it Coming is. Coming from an NFL family. Yes, it is. Showing up Sean tonight. Mosley with the tackle. All right. 10-43, third and five for the Bulldogs. Back to pass is Ray. Uh, He's going deep. Wide open. Wide open. Oh, with the huge catch. tackle. Huge tackle and a great catch by Nick, Nick Brown. Brown. But there is a flag on the play. Oh, uh, is that uh, Michael Amy with that hit? Or was it... Uh, no, that was Ephraim Dotson, no? Ephraim Dotson with the hit. But it looks like we have a flag on the play. Let's see wow. what, what the flag is. It was thrown after the hit. And we got to see, actually, if it's a, it's a personal, personal foul. foul. So it's actually going to be... It's going to be against the... Ephraim Dotson, so that actually makes uh, makes Heights a little bit more effective in close to the red zone. But I, you know, here, here are Dylan Ray, a good, a good. Like I said, he's been mixing some great passes and runs tonight. And here it is, a great pass to Nick Brown on that one. Uh, it's first and ten now. They're gonna they got some great great uh, yardage on. On the penalty as well. So right at the 20 to give now and to Williams. And stumbles down to around the, I'd say the 17, maybe 18-yard line yeah. of the Hurricanes. And as the Hurricane actually getting up there slowly, uh, the actual uh, Jamari Peters on that play as well got up a little slow. Double slots to the right for Ray. Williams in the backfield. And he has a man in motion. Passes to his Ray. man in motion. Oh, it can't uh, go anywhere, though. Pass was to uh, Caden Cole. Caden Cole with the catch, but there was a great play, though, on, on that one. Yeah, gosh. And like you were saying, Michael, that momentum that they had in their last drive before the half, which they just couldn't make anything out of it, um, it did carry over. It, they it get the ball over. the next half, and look, here we are. 20-yard line. They got a third and nine. Uh, they got to at least put some points on the board, Michael. They got at least a field goal, something here, getting this game. Third night, Ray up the middle. He's gonna get close to the Ooh. first down. I think he's a yard shy. Yard shy. It could be about fourth, fourth and one. Yeah. But but I I like the way Dylan Ray is actually getting him to hurry up the offense, and he's gonna. Sneak oh, him, I don't to, think they got that. I don't think he got it. Let's see if they got the first down yardage. And it's a turnover on downs. The high tower defense. Oh. What was a great, great drive by by the Bulldogs was stopped by a great defensive. Uh, great defensive stop by uh, by the Hurricanes. Hurricanes will start uh, right around their own 12 uh, yard line. This was a great drive, and, and you figure had there been maybe a couple more passes out of that last drive by Dylan Ray, maybe the possibility may loom that they could have been in the end zone. Yeah. They were opening up that zone defense as well. All right, here comes Stewart. Uh, it's got trips to the right as a man in motion. Looks like Payne is back in the backfield with him now. Give us the Payne. No, nope. Stewart fakes it. He goes out to the right side, gets around close to the 20, a little bit now around the 22, 23 Ooh, yard line. Oh, if Connor Brown wasn't there, that was a house call, Michael. That was, it was. <laughs> Connor Brown with a great tackle uh, for uh, for the Bulldogs as well. It, it it comes to a point where I think that. You know, maybe the Hurricanes may be possibly thinking about mixing this thing up as they get close past uh, the half, past midfield. Trips to the right, back to pass Stewart, has a man, Jeremy Payne. Payne gets around close to the 30-yard line. Jeremy Payne, TCU commit. Uh, it's going to be a very big, going to be a very big, big, help for the Horn Frogs next season when he graduates. We sank it at 10. Second to three. Give again. Looks like it's to Payne, but he is stopped. Great stops. 
That was uh, Anthony and who was the other? Genevieve and Anthony. Yeah, that was good. Genevieve and Anthony with the stop. Third and three for the Hurricanes. It's playoff action. We have it on the FH Network. And the give was to Payne. Looks like he, sh he stopped short of that first down marker. What a stop. Huge stop for the Huge Bulldogs. Huge stop for the Bulldogs. Wow. Their defense has been really stalwart all night. All right, we got Broderick Brown back to receive the punt. Watch. Broderick Brown to receive the punt. Let's see if he takes it out. And it's going to take a bounce. It takes a hurricane bounce. Goes out around the 39-yard line. With 6.54 left in the third quarter, the score, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 12 in the Houston Heights Bulldogs, nothing. Staying here for a moment. We get you caught up with some other regional action going into playoff playoffs as well tonight. Some great games and some surprising ones as well. See if A&M consolidated mm -hmm. can hold on to uh, against a very highly ranked 5A Fulcher uh, high school team, the Chargers. First and ten. Ray back to pass has a man across oh. great hit. Uh but good catch on the and good hole on the play. Lamont Robbins. Lamont Robbins with the catch. And then whew, Michael Amy. Gosh, Michael he's Amy had a big with, night he's tonight. He's had a big night with tackles yeah. for the Hurricanes. It's gonna be you can have it now at uh, close to his first and ten. Back to pass is Ray. As goes oh. oh, he was trying to get it. Looks like he was trying to get it to Gabriel Moan. Moan, and, and also in the in the vicinity was uh, Caden Cole. A great defensive, uh, great defensive play there, as also by Cade Phillips. It's going to be second and ten. Uh, I'd, say, I'd say around the forty. Ooh, I'd say forty-seven yard line. Give run right. Oh, he's, he's got at it. the forty. At the thirty. He can take it at back. The Twenty at the ten. He's oh, in. Touchdown! touchdown. The Ray. Bulldogs are on the board. Dylan Ray, that has to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 52-yard of a run. Michael, we've got ourselves a ball game. We have ourselves a ball game. And with the extra point coming up, 52 yards by Dylan Ray on the touchdown run. Wow. He, got, he, he got the block that he needed up front. And it seemed like they were committing to the pass the – Hurricane defenders were committing to pass 52 yards later in for the score. The deck falls down, the kick is up, and it's good by Hardwick Font Prevost with the kick. With 6.15 left in the third quarter, the score the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 12 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs 7. You're watching and listening to. UIL 6A Division Playoffs Regional Action on the NFHS Network. We'll be back.
one. Welcome back to All Stadium in Missouri City, Texas, just south of Houston. My name is Michael Lewis, along with Grady Sweeney, and also Jellica Collins on the production team. Uh, the Fort Bend High Tower Hurricanes lead the Houston Heights Bulldogs six uh, by a count of twelve to seven. But Houston Heights just scored on a fifty-two yard touchdown run by quarterback Dylan Ray. Kick now by. Hardnick Prevost coming down and up the middle is Henry. Kamal Henry up the middle. You know, and we talked about this, Grady. We said Houston, the Bulldogs coming out in the second half, the Houston Heights team coming out in the second half, getting the ball they were going to start feeling that momentum coming in and look what happened. Yep, and then just a little more focus on Dylan Ray finding his pocket, getting the blocks in place, and what do you have? 52-yard field goal. 52-yard run, and, and and the point after after was good. Yeah. And now we see if Hightower can actually extend the lead again. They're first and 10 for the 39. Trips to the right uh, in motion. He has Allen Henry. Jacks, it's give it the give is to. That's pain, and oh, he's going pain. nowhere. He's going nowhere. My mistake. Fifty-two yard rushing touchdown. Not field goal. Yes. I don't know that came <laughs> out. I was like, did I just say field goal? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jer Jerry Payne has been limited to just a few. Not the breakout game you, you normally would have against this very stout, uh, very solid, solid uh, defensive. Houston Heights. Be second and eleven for the Fort Bend High Tower Hurricanes. Yeah, it's a hard line to break. You got you know Genevi and Anthony up there with uh, Jordan Clavel. Oof. Back to pass. Stewart has pain. Uh, he's Ooh, tripped up. He tripped up. Really good play on. Really good play by Broderick Brown to stop to stop Jared Payne, Jeremy Payne. Third and eleven is from the forty, our own forty-four. It's gonna be trips to the right for Joe Stewart Jr. Stewart. He's going to run it up the middle, gets to about the 46-yard line. That's going to be a flag, oh, yeah. and that's going to be personal against foul. personal foul against. It looks like it's going to be against the Bulldogs. Yeah, he hit him when, uh, yeah, that, that's when Stewart against, was sliding in for the first. That's going to be against Noel Sal. They're going to get him for it. Oh, that's that's very interesting. So mm -hmm. that play will go against Austin Bowen, the right. running back of running back. That really makes a change in the in the in the situation now for uh, for the Hurricanes. It moves them back. So an unsportsmanlike conduct. It's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct against oh. uh, uh, Austin Bowen. It's going to be a first down. It could be possibly first and, I think it's first and 15. But we'll double check that. Maybe trips right for Stewart. He has a man in motion. Give to Payne. Give to Payne. Get some, some of that yardage back. He's going to get about close to the 40. I say close to their 43, maybe 44 yard line. So it's going to be second down. 3.56 left in the third quarter of this one. Glad to have you along on the NFH, NFHS Network. Fort Bend Hightower leading Houston Heights by a score of 12 to 7. Second and 7 from the 39. A receiver in motion. Give Henry. 
uh, gets nowhere, gets up to around maybe the, mm, let's say 42, 40, maybe 42 yard line. Good tackle on the play by Aunt Jordan Clavell, who's had a great game tonight as far as on the edge. It, it 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 goes to a point where you really look at this 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 stop if this stop is made by by Houston Heights if this stop is made let me tell you something I, I I can say this much here Grady this could be a game changer for for Houston Heights if they were to make it a stop yeah and those mixed extra points earlier in the game we'll see if that comes back to harm them on high tower. Two fifty nine, a little bit under three minutes left in the third quarter. Fort Bend Hightower, the Hurricanes are leading this ball game by a score of twelve to seven over the Houston Heights Bulldogs. So it's going to be. Uh, they're resetting the clock to three minutes and ten seconds. Seven, three, third and seven under 42. Great, co great, co great crowd on hand here at Hall Stadium, just south of, uh, southeast of, southwest of Houston in the suburb of Missouri City, Texas. All right, big third down, 37. Big third down, third and seven. Back to uh -huh. pass. Stewart out on the right side. Oh, he That's got room. He's got room. He's got a first down. The, that is his favorite target, Mikel Reddick. And he gets out to close to around the, the first down market, market and moves the chains for Hightower. It gets him right back, right down to about the 42-yard line. And he going to a hurry-up offense. Back to pass. It's Stewart. He's going Looking, deep. Going He's got deep. his He's man. Got man. He drops it. Oh. 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 Kamal Henry. Kamal Henry the had junior. it and just dropped it. Oh, that's... Lost the handle on it. It was a perfect pass from Joseph Stewart Jr. And Kamal Henry looked like he had, he had, he had a sure six points. <sighs> sure six points. Caden Cole with the actual coverage on that play as well. It's going to be second and 10 from the 42. Back to pass, Stewart. Out to got, get Ooh. a man out to the 30-yard line. That's complete to Mikel Reddick. It's got close to, close to the first down marker. Hurricanes in a hurry up offense. Third and two. And ball is. I don't know. I think it's short. It's short. Looks like Stewart was trying to run for a sneak and it was he was stopped short. Stopped by Frank Moss. And also Joseph Chavez with the tackle. So that's a fourth and one. Fourth and one. A great defensive stop here for the Bulldogs would actually bring momentum, especially as we're getting close to the end of the third quarter. And they're going for it. They're going to go for or it. There's a timeout. Yep. We'll take the timeout with them. With 204 left in the third quarter, the score, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes, 12. And the Houston Heights Bulldog 7. You're listening, watching UIL 6A Divisional Playoff Action on the NFHS Network.
one. Welcome back to Hall Stadium in Missouri City, Texas, just outside of Houston. Uh, Michael Lewis, along with Grady Sweeney and Angelica Collins, are producing. And the and a flag on the play looked like the actual Hurricanes. And it looks like it was fourth and it's going to be fourth and probably six on the play. It looks like the, there was actually some holding on the call. Seems like a false start. So fourth and five. Fourth and five from the 37 yard line. And it looks like Joseph Stewart Jr. and the Hurricanes are going to go for it. Stewart has trips and laps. And watch out for Reddick. Watch for Reddick on this one. Back to, oh, looks like there's a stop and play. So it's going to be actually a timeout on, by, called by the Houston Knights uh, Bulldogs. Michael Lewis, Grady Sweeney, and also Jellica Collins here on the NFH, NFHS Network's co coverage of UIL 6A Divisional playoffs yeah, and these these are the most intense weeks that are coming up as you know three weeks from now everybody will be for the state of Texas everybody will be in Arlington uh, for all classifications of the actual championship that's gonna be exciting Michael and you know it's what, been and, quite a season and 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 I tell you what tonight regionally there is an upset in the making and just northwest of here, you know, where we are. Uh, last we heard of a game, what, the a &M Consolidated was leading the full year Chargers uh, by a score of 24 to 7 at halftime. So we're going to try to get some more information. But there's some other information, some other games tonight as well. Uh, and there are some Saturday games as well, as you probably know, across the state because of last week. Some of the games in North Texas are being played, were played, are being played, were played uh tomorrow and uh, it's fourth and five back to pass to Stewart looking has a man he almost had he it almost had it oh great play by Edison Ellison Crawford and I think that was Broderick Brown that's that the uh with that the was stop. Edison Crawford with the actual uh knockback and he was trying to go to go, go to actual Ashford Lenhart on the play. Big, big stop for Houston Heights in this one. They're going to get it after 38, their own 38. 153 left. Grady, momentum time. Yep, watch out for that Dylan Ray. Can Dylan Ray and... and he must be up to 100 rushing yards tonight, Michael, He's if not more so. He's got to be, yes. Trips to the right for Dylan Ray. As Williams in motion. Ray going to take it. He's met. He's met right there. Uh, great tackle on the play by Mosley. Jamari Peters. No, Rayshon, Rayshon Mosley. Deshaun no. Mosley with the actual tackle. We talked about him earlier. One twenty, a little bit under one twenty-five left. One one twenty-three left. Second and thirteen for the the Bulldogs from Houston Heights. Ray running gets uh, out to about close to the forty-two yard line. And good trip by Cameron Reddick. Now, Michael, do you know if Cameron Reddick and Mikel Reddick are related? They could be. <laughs> Interesting. Because Cameron's a DB, and as you know, Mikel's a wide receiver. And so. that ball is a free play, but the, uh, the 
instant interceptions out of bounds. We're going to see also who the flag is on. It's offsides on the defense, oh. so that actually may get a little bit more closer for Houston Heights. Uh, it's going to make it more like a third and eight, uh, more than a third and 13. Yeah, it could be. It could be related. I mean, a lot of people with the same last names, you never know. It's going to be now third and, most likely third and eight for the for the Heights, uh, for the Heights Ball Club, Houston Heights uh, Bulldogs. Uh, Ray has double slots to the right. Looks like it's a third and two, so that was a 10 yard penalty. It was like a 10 yarder, so now it's third and two. Give Ray Ooh. Banks. Oh, he's Ooh. been in the backfield. Great play. Hayden Slater, the junior. Hayden Slater was right there to stop it. <sighs> Unbelievable. Give me now fourth and two. Looks like Coach Steven Dixon's going to go for it. And he's going to talk uh, it over. Get a call a timeout. What? And it's going to run down to a little bit of 11 seconds left. And, uh, yeah, I think that's the last play. All the way out to yeah, the save their quarter. timeout. So... As we go to the fourth quarter, the score, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 12 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs 7. You're watching and listening to UIL 6A regional playoff action on the NFHS Network. And back here at the Hall Stadium, the punt. And that punt is shanked. Looks like it went out around the 40. About the 40 yard line. We'll find out Welcome here in a minute. Welcome back to Hall Stadium in, uh, in uh, Missouri City, Texas, just south of Houston. Uh, Michael Lewis, Grady Sweeney, along with Angelica Collins, and the producer uh, as well. Fourth quarter. Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes leading this one, Grady, 12 to 7 with the Houston Heights Bulldogs. But I tell you what, Houston Heights is showing some little bit of life and momentum, and this game is not over by by a long shot. Oh, well, it's going to come down to the wire, the final minutes, and we've seen great, um, great things from both sides of the ball tonight, Michael. Yeah, defensive, they, yeah, offensive, yes, defensively, yes. it's just been all around. Uh, this is what you look for when you watch playoff football. Yes, Michael, you, you do, you do. Give oh. to Henry and met right there. Great. None tackle. other than Jordan other. Clavel. Jordan Clavel has had a great night. He is oh. probably, you give that, whoever gets Jordan Clavel when he graduates, they're getting, they're getting, they're getting themselves, he has one year left. And Jordan Clavel comes back. He's going to have a lot of other juniors on that mm -hmm. front line that are going to be very, very good. It's going to be second and 17 for the Hurricanes uh, from their own 39. Back to pass is Stewart. Looking. Goes deep. His man's wide open. Wide open. He's, He's got it. Him at the 10 down to about the five-yard line. Get out of town. And you know who that is. That is Jeremy Payne. Jeremy Payne. Wow. That is a What a pass, major, what a catch. What a pass and what a catch. And then Connor Brown's lucky to catch him before he oh, ran that thing in, but Wow. What? That had to have been at least that had to have been at least a, a a 55 yard play. Wow. And on a second and 17. And they get a first and first and inside the red zone. Oh, it's And it's going to be at the 6 yard line. 
Still a lot of time on the clock, but being down by a two-score game, that's going to it's gonna heat things up a bit, that's Michael. Let's it. see if they can finish it off. Fumble! Oh, Ball's out, but I think he got it. I think he has his band. I think oh. he has it. No! No he way! They got it back after a 50-yard plus pass. The recovery was Are made. Are you kidding me, Michael? The recovery was made by Nicholas Martinez. For Houston Heights, wow. Wow. Have we talked about this all night about Fort Ben Hightower? Have wow. we talked about the Hurricanes? Either penalties have stopped them, and now a critical turnover. I'm out I'm out of words, Mike. I don't I'm know what to words. say. Back to back, just game changing plays back at the drop of a hat. And this ooh, if Houston Heights if the Bulldogs can can really, really make some noise on this drive. This would be great. Great pass by Ray. Yep. Gets it man, out Caden soon. Cole. Looks like it's. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's Kisan Mitchell. He signed Mitchell with the catch. Twelve to seven. The Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes lead this one over the Houston Heights Bulldogs. Uh, very great defensive stop by the Houston Heights Bulldogs. Trips to the left for it. Now, Ray has a fumble. But there is a stop in play, and that may have... And a flag. And a flag on the play. That may have stopped what could have been an actual, actual disaster for... Uh, it's, it's a... He puts the puts the Heights offense into a slight hole as the false start is against them. Now they're backed up a little bit, and they're going to be right around the inside the I'd say the eight yard line. That that call saved Dylan Ray and possibly may have saved uh, them from actually being two scores down. All right, we got a second and ten. Second and ten for the the Bulldogs. Ray out to the right side. He's Ooh. trying to get out of, but he is met there. It's like I was saying before the half, Michael. I mean, you can Dylan Ray can make a lot of plays happen, but that passing game's got to come up. It's got you, to. He's got to get that ball downfield. Brandon Kizzy with the stop for the Hurricanes on this one, on that play. Third and ten for the Bulldogs. There's been a lot of. It looks like they're going into that that soft, that hard uh, three four. Big play. Third, three, Third and four. twelve. That four three zone. Back to passes Ray. We got a flag, a maybe a hold. A, maybe a hold, and Ray throws a pick. Intercepted. It is intercepted. Pick but six. there is no no call of a touchdown. Looks like there was an interception by Cameron Reddick. Cameron Reddick, but that may not stand. Let's see what the call is. It's a hold on the offense. Michael, touchdown. Touchdown for the Hurricane. First down Whoa. for Fort Bend, Hightower. So they're going to negate oh, he went the out. touchdown. Okay. He, yeah, it I, like I didn't see him step out. The okay. touchdown was negated. But still, you're going to have first down inside. So, so we're back to right where we were, Mike. Yeah, Are you it, kidding it's, me? <laughs> it, it, it's really strange what this game is, has gone back and forth. But now the Hurricanes have it now at the Heights, the Houston Heights, uh, I'd say the 17-yard line. It's going to be time out on the field. I'm going to take it, take it with them. With 9-10 left in the fourth quarter, uh, the score, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricane, Hurricanes 12 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs 7. You're watching, you're listening to 6A, UIL 6A Regional Playoff Action. 
on the NFHS network. We'll be back. One. Back at Hall Stadium in Missouri City, Texas, just now, the views that uh, Michael Lewis, along with Grady Sweeney and Austin Angelica Collins producing for us as well. The Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes actually on the move and actually giving it to Jerry Payne. Gets it around close to probably the 16 yard line. You know, this one, Grady, has been back and forth defensively and there have been drives that have been really, really moving forward, and, and it just seems like it's back and forth. This game-changing plays out of this ball game so far. Trips to the left. Stewart back to pass. Has a man. Touchdown! Has it for a touchdown. Shane Keen, the Kane, tight end. The tight end, the junior, scores a touchdown. 18 to 7. The Hurricanes lead this one, but I tell you what, it's still a lot of time for this Heights Heights Ball Club to really come back and 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 try to redeem itself. And the kick is going to come from Jonathan Vargas to uh, take the kick for and try to extend it out to 19 to 7 for lead for the Hurricanes. Ball is down. Kick is up by Vargas. It's good. With 8.37 left in the this one, the score, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 19 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs 7. You're watching and listening to the UIL 6A Regional Division Championships on the NFHS Network. We'll be back. Welcome back to Hall Stadium in Missouri City, Texas, just south of Houston. Michael Lewis, along with Grady Sweeney and Angelica Collins on the production team. Uh, Jonathan Vargas kicking off and for Hightower and the run back uh, at the 30. He's got at room! 40, He's got the, the two! Do they have the block? At, at the 30, down to the wow. 20 yard line. Lamont the Robbins. There we go. One of the. One of the stars on the offense, Lamont Robbins, with an electrifying kickoff return. Like we said, Grady, this game has a lot of twists and turns to it. Again, momentum can happen for for the Bulldogs. And what a read. Standing behind his man after the fum briefly fumbling the ball, picking it up, and then he's just like, I found my zone, found his blocker, and he was off. He was the off. speed. I couldn't he believe the just speed, had Michael. one blocker left in. Boy, that could have been a that could have been a return for six. 
that could have got Heights back into this ball game. But still, they're in great position now. They're actually at the uh, at the 20, 25 25 yard line. Trip a double slide back to pass. Good play. Ray has a man out to around close to 19, and that's going to be Nick Brown. Nick Brown with the, with the actual catch. You can look at it from a standpoint. You said, you know, 19-7 to 7 is okay. Game's over. It. No. And not with uh -oh. this Houston Knights ball club. No. No. Well, and with eight minutes to go, we still got a whole lot to see for Michael. Double slot to the right. Ray give Hands Williams. It off. Williams out to the it. Five He's got it. Out. Touchdown. Ezell Williams with the touchdown, the leading rusher for the Bulldogs, scores on a 20-yard touchdown run, and now the extra point is coming. Wasted no time. And one minute later, right back where They're we were. Right back where we were. Sean Hardwick Prevost with the extra point try for the Bulldogs. The ball is down. The kick is up. It's through. We have ourselves a ball game with 7.46 left in the fourth quarter. The score. The Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 19 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs 14. You're watching and listening to UIL 6A playoff regional action on the NFHS Network. We'll be back. Stadium in Missouri City, Texas, just south of Houston, and it is a barn burner. This one, Michael Lewis, Grady Sweeney, along with Angelica Collins, on our production crew, and Fort Bend High Tower leading this one over the Houston Heights, 19 to 14, uh, taking it back for the run. Uh, it is um, Jeremy Payne with the return, but a very short return. Grady, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Great big plays on each side of the ball. I mean, Michael, I know we're watching playoff football right now because get this. You get a 52-yard pass from Hightower. They fumble on the five, turning it over to the Bulldogs, who then throw a pick at the 15. Hightower scores, and then the Bulldogs strike back with a return to the 25 and 20-yard rush in just a matter of minutes. Oh, I my mean, goodness. Well, I tell you what. Uh, at, at, and I'm going to tell you right now, at, uh, over just not that far from us, at Rice Stadium in Houston, in Houston, the number two team in 6A is having a problem right now. We'll talk about that. The run by Jeremy Payne. Jeremy Payne up for some good yardage at Rice Stadium in Houston. It is the number two team in the state. The Katy Tigers in 6A, 21, and the Cypher Tigers, Bobcats, 14. That is with under two minutes left, and Cypher's driving. This is playoff football. I, is. I, you can't get no worse. I mean, the teams that you're talking about, even Hightower, a, a very highly ranked, one of the highly ranked 6A teams in this playoff, getting a scare tonight. And a run by Payne takes it out to Louis Pass the first down yardage and it's gonna be first and ten. I mean, you're looking at here is the team here is the team. I mean, top teams like in five A and Folsier losing right now, trailing to 
A and M consolidated, and that's going to be an injured player for Houston Heights. Uh, and hopefully, he's actually be able to get up on this one. We'll see who his injured player is. Looks is that like Jordan? it's actually Jordan Clavell. Oh, that would be a huge. Oh, loss. Gosh, be... I hope he's okay. Oh, we're still going to actually see if he can get up on his own power. We actually actually see where Jordan Clavell, he has been very good tonight as well as been one of his defensive stalwarts on the edge. But yeah, at uh, at at Rice Stadium, we're going to keep you informed of this one because this could be an actual upset if this keeps if the, if if Cy Fair can score. Wow, this is a barber. All of these teams are getting pushed by all of these teams. These top teams are getting pushed tonight, Grady. And then it's you never know. This is playoff football, you never know. We're going to try to grab some more scores for you as well. Uh, but we're going to keep it breast on that Katie, uh, Katie and, and Cy Fair ball game for you as well. Uh, and let's uh, let's also take a look at some other games while we'll see if uh, they're working on Jordan Clavell. And around the state, another one. One minute to go in the third quarter. Top rank, and this is the team that's leading that won the district. Uh, district 18-6A, Houston Lamar. They are getting pushed by, by Ridgepoint. And they're only leading them by a score of 24-21 in the third quarter. It's the third quarter there. A lot of these teams that are top ranked are getting there. But you can feel that. You know that playoff pressure, and you, they're they're trying to make their way to. If you're in Texas, trying to make their way to, to the big house in Arlington. Yeah. Well, that's a big loss for the Jordan Bulldogs. Lavelle, he's and, out. He's out. So it's going to be other guys going to have to step up and actually try to hold this one off. Six forty nine left in this one. Give the pain. He stopped at the. See about the 49-yard line. It's going to be about second down. Well, you got to look at it. it you got to look at tech. You got to look at Texas high school football, Grady. It's just almost like 732 teams start, and by the time you get to December, the second week of December, it comes down to the last final Does? ten of each class. Give out on the outside stop Great on the stop. edge. Great stop. Jalen Bims. Jalen Bims, as we said, one of the one of the top class classmen coming out of this region. Uh, the give was to Cedric, Cedric Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. It looks like he's actually uh, one of the back of running backs as well. They rotate him in and out uh, to kind of give to kind of give their. Uh, to give Jeremy Payne a break. Oh, big third and down. Third and seven, Michael. Five and a half minutes left so to play. So now Payne's back in. So I can pretty much think it's going to be a Jeremy Payne, mm. probably a run. Timeout. Yeah, I think they missed that. Ashford Landhart. Yes, Hopped Atlanta. in the field the last minute, and the defense didn't read it. So good call on that timeout. Because that would have just... So they have a timeout. It looks like it's actually going back, and there was too many men on the field. Uh, so they, so the, ref, the official may have caught it. Okay, because I, I saw him, uh, Ashford just jump out there, and I was like, what is he? <laughs> Where did he come from? So it's going to be third and 13 for the Hurricanes. Critical down for them. Back to pass is Stewart. He's going deep. Going deep. He's got his man. man. He's got it. Touchdown. That is a Kate touchdown. Phillips. Phillips with the touchdown. And that makes it 26-14. to 14. 
With oh the extra my point God. coming up. Oh, there's a flag too. Let's hold up. There's a flag hold on. here. Hold on. This could be a game changing call right here. If that stands, that will be the second touchdown pass by Joe Stewart. And Stewart has already has a touchdown pass uh, to Michael Reddick. If this stands, looks like it may be against Houston Heights. We're going to get this official signal here. If it stands, it was a... If it stands, it's a 52-yard a touchdown pass from Joseph Stewart to Kate Phillips. So a touchdown does stand. There'll be a touchdown, and that will the, the actual penalty will be against Mikel Reddick. And that may be for sportsman like conduct, 15-yard penalty. The ball is down. The kick is up. Flag is on the play. Kick by Vargas's kick is up. Looks like it is good. It's going to be offside, offsides on the Bulldogs' defense. With 4:59 left in the in this one, the score: the Fort Bend High Tower Hurricanes 26 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs 14. You're watching and listening to UIL 6A Divisional Playoff Action on the NFHS Network. We'll be back. Welcome back to Hall Stadium in Missouri City, Texas. Uh, Michael Lewis along with Grady Sweeney and also Angelica Collins on the producing end on the NFH NFHS Network 26 to 14. Uh, Fort Bend Hightower leading the Hurricanes leading the Houston Heights Bulldogs and kicked by coming down and it's returned by Broderick Brown. Brown. And he is oh. bent there and tackled. Uh, Austin, great stop. Brown. Austin Brown. Austin Brown made the tackle. All right. All right. Uh, Texas high school football legendary fans and big fans of the Katy Tigers, you are in trouble. It has gone to overtime at Rice Stadium. And the score is, is the Katy Tigers 21 and the Cy Fair Bobcats 21 in overtime. Wow, I cannot believe it. Grady, a team that comes in, Cypher 10 and 1, comes in, gives Katie the business in overtime. Unbelievable. Back to pass, uh, has a man, Dylan Ray, looks like he had his man. Uh, That's uh, Caden Cole. Caden Cole. Great and stop on the play. He's not looking and, too hot. And uh, Cole is still down, but. This is what playoff football is all about. You're talking about high-ranked ball clubs now getting pushed. And here it is. Here's a 10-time championship state team getting pushed by Cy Fair. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And it looks like we got a final score. It looks like A&M Consolidated is 31 with full share 19. Yeah. Well, there's another 
another hot top ranked team in the state of Texas going down mm -hmm. to A&M Consolidated. All right, clock management's crucial here. We have four and a half minutes left Williams in the fourth. on the outside. He's oh! met. Great tackle there. Oh, Braylon Kizzy, the Braylon linebacker, Kizzy, the senior. Line, the edge. Woo! And actually, Braylon Kizzy is an actual commit uh, to Texas A&M. So, oh. possible commit to Texas A&M. All right. Third and four. Third and four. We yeah. came up with that score over at Rice Stadium in Houston with uh, Katie and, and Cy Fair. Back to pass. Ray. Oh! Man slipped. Oh, and that, that was Caden, Caden Cole. Cole. He slipped on that one. It's going to be fourth and, fourth and five? five. See if they, if Coach says Steve Dixon wants to go for this one. I can see a Dylan Ray scramble. We haven't seen in a little bit, Michael. We and that's seen been, it. uh, it's been a while. Been a big. Back to passes, Ray. He's Had going deep. Man. He got it. He's got it, and he's got a man. Lamont Robbins. Lamont Robbins with the first <laughs> down. And goes out of bounds, which leaves 349 on the clock for a first and 10. We'll also try to get you caught up on the other scores as well. I know Katie is actually uh, in overtime with Cy Fair. And we'll check in with another... Hands it off. Hands it off to Williams. Gets but he's nowhere. Met. He gets nowhere. He's met by Caden Slater, the linebacker, the junior. Clock, <laughs> clock management crucial right here, Michael. They three and a half three minutes. Three and a half minutes left. They actually have to score and possibly, possibly get a, um, possibly get a. Yeah, it's possibly onside. get it onside. That's the only way now. Back to passes. And there he Ray. goes. He's looking across and has a man. Oh, he's out, though. Just out of bounds. Lamont Robbins stepped out of bounds at Delmar Stadium. We're going to take a look at that one, uh, that playoff game as well. We get you that score in just a minute between Ridgepoint and Lamar. Back to pass is Ray. He's being being rushed. The rush has a man. He's got him down to around the 34-yard line. Gabriel Mo. Gabriel Mo is tight end, and that is going to be a first and ten for the Bulldogs. They're going into good clock management, and Ray has double slots on both sides. Two forty-five on the clock. Trying to draw, trying to draw. High tower off sides. Back to passes. Ray steps out on the other side and throws and he oh, got, you got it. Be no, he me. didn't. You got to be kidding me. It? You got to be kidding me. Oh. Rayson Mitchell catches, makes a. Valiant catch. Oh, there's laundry on the field, there Michael. Hold a, on. There is a penalty flag on the field. Let's see if this touchdown holds up. That is going to be a touchdown, and it, it's a Penalty against Houston Heights, and it's going to be assessed in a kickoff, but Rashawn Mitchell catches a 32-yard touchdown pass from Dylan Ray. And he didn't know that was coming until a second before the catch. <laughs> he looks around. Where's this ball? Jumps up. Grab. I mean, are you kidding me? The talent on both sides of the ball today, Michael? Unbelievable. The kick by, by Sean Hardeke. Brevos is up and good. We have 226 left in this one. The score, the Fort Bend High Tower Hurricanes 26 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs 21. You're watching and listening to 
UIL 6A regional playoff action on the NFHS Network. We'll be back. One. Welcome back to Hall Stadium in uh, Missouri City, Texas, just south of Houston. Michael Lewis, along with Grady Sweeney and Angelica Gallagher, are on the production, doing our production tonight on the NFHS Network. It's a wild one here at Hall Stadium. Uh, the Hightower Hurricanes for Fort Bend leading the Houston Heights Bulldogs 26 to 21, but this has been a back and forth classic so far, Grady. I mean, we had a 12 zip game at half, Michael. And 26-21, this is, this is unbelievable. Kick great, by kick. great kick. by Great kick goes kick. over Payne's. Jeremy Payne's head. Payne. He it up at the two. At the two-yard line. And he what a is, kick. He is oh. stuck, but that's going to be a penalty on. Oh, looks like, I don't know. Did he get a face mask, or was that a shoulder it, pad? It looks like a shoulder pad. It oh. almost looked like a face mask, but yeah. they didn't. the officials didn't call it. Well. We said, we said, you know, you're talking about maybe this is a game, this is going to be a game, and you talk about this maybe ending, and, you know, it, it seemed like Hightower had the edge in the first half, and now look what happened. Michael, that's not even the best kickoff I've seen in high school. That's the best kickoff I've seen all year, including the NFL. He kicked that, bounced, and stopped at the two. I thought it was going to go back for a touchback. The ball stops and bounces, and he has to take it but in. You, you know what? what? Hardnick Prevost has been very much effective for them. And not only a punting game, as you probably saw tonight, early yeah. in the first half, but Couple he's also... The five. Yeah. And, and, and he's been really great in the kickoffs as well. 218, they... A big stop is needed by Houston Heights to get them back into a possible position to win this one. And... 44, <laughs> that is uh, Trayvon Duncan, the junior, the defensive end for the tackle. And they've... Look, they've got two minutes. I mean... Two minutes and there's two timeouts left, so we've got a second and maybe nine. Seven, second, second and seven. And second and seven. Okay. It's like there was a run by Stewart. Big stop here. Big stop here. Man, you gotta watch out for Payne and uh, Mike Mikel Reddick. Twenty-six to twenty-one in this one. 142, 137 left in this one. Yeah, I think they're going to run, right? Yep, there he is. The pain, and pain. he found a gap. He found a gap. He's getting He's got out the to, first and more. Got the first and more. Gets out to close to the oh, Michael. 28 line, 20 yard line. But I tell you what, <sighs> this is what they wanted to do. Try to give it to their key guy, Jeremy Payne, and this is what's happening. That might be it. I mean, they. But, but I tell you what. Anything can happen within this yeah. this drive, and you know, in, in Hightower, even though they're leading by five, yeah. there has been some flaws within their offense stopping because of penalties. So we can only yeah. see this minute twenty six. Yep. They have to keep them on this down. Hand yeah, off the pain. Pain. Great stop. tackle. Great tackle. Sixty two. Danavian Anthony, the senior. Danavian Anthony, one of the, one of they call the, the dogs, the the the, the Crush Brothers, <laughs> the Crush Triplets on the front line for, for Coach Dixon's uh, Houston Heights Bulldogs. They're trying to make this big stop. If they can make the big stop, it's a possibility they can get back and pull this one off. We've mm -hmm. seen games that have been pulled off in the last yep. second and night. Seconds in Houston area in high Texas high school football. 121 left on the clock. All right. Here is an update from over at, uh, just southwest of us. It's still 21 to 21. Katie and Cypher. 
The top ranked KD Tigers and the Cypher Bobcats are playing over there. Cypher just missed the field goal, 32 yard field goal, and now KD has life. I, I, you know, you get these teams that are at 10 and 1, and you figure they, the district they raid no, and then all of a sudden they come into playing a Cypher team, mm -hmm. which is 10 and 1, and they won their district as well, but they had one loss. It's going to be at second and 10 from the 25. Stewart gives the pain. They're going for end oh. the They have it. Uh, end round is going to 40. At the 50. Out to the 35 yard line. He stays the 31 in. line. And that may be it. He nearly run. sacked and hands it off. Oh. Jer and that's what they needed. Austin Bowen with the end around. And that could have actually ended. The Bulldog season, a valiant effort by Houston Heights, young Houston Heights football team, may have just come. Their playoff run may have just come to the end. But I'm gonna tell you what, I'm impressed with the Houston Heights football team coming into next year. Uh, Coach Dixon has a lot to be happy about. He does, yeah. They're gonna go into victory formation, and gonna just just dice the clock out here. Well, partner, we've seen ourselves a pretty good, a really good football game tonight. Um, and the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes are one more play from going into the third round. The Houston Heights Bulldogs, I, I would be honest with you, they, they were big underdogs here in this ball game to give the Hurricanes, all they could give them, it, it was just a great, I, I would just say a great a great effort by, by Houston. Heights. It really was. Exciting game. Great plays all around. All around. Well, an upset is, just ha is about to happen at Rice Stadium. At Rice Stadium, the number two the number three rank, Katie Tigers, are on the verge of being knocked out of the playoffs. Cy Fair has just scored a touchdown on an interception, a 25-yard interception return. And that is going to be the end of this one. But at Rice Stadium, uh, the Katie Tigers are at their last end, and they may be eliminated from the playoffs as well. That's going to do it from here from Hall Stadium in Missouri City, Texas, just south of Houston. The final score, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricanes 26 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs 21. Fort Bend Hightower moves on to the next round. Great season for the Houston, for Coach Dixon, Stephen Dixon and the, and the Houston Heights Bulldogs high, high school football team. Again, from All Stadium, of Michael Lewis, Laura Grady, Sweeney, and Angelica Collins. Thank you very much for joining us on the NFHS Network. Final score again, the Fort Bend Hightower Hurricane 26 and the Houston Heights Bulldogs 21.